The Security Council is divided into two parts. Very cunningly on their part. Dajjal is a mastermind. There are the permanent members of the Security Council. Permanent means, even in Bahasa it means forever and ever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. And there are five in number. Five. And uh, the other um, members are called the non-permanent members and they are elected for terms of two years. Hmm? Decisions of the Security Council are taken by a majority vote. But if a permanent member of the Security Council votes against the resolution, then they use what is known as a veto. They needed to have that there to save Israel. The United States of America has used the veto so many times we've lost count in protecting Israel. Now let's go to the permanent members of the Security Council. Number one is the Zionist state. The first ruling state created by Dajjal was Britain. A day like a year. You've read this book, haven't you? A day like a year. And Britain is a permanent member of the Security Council. The second permanent member of the Security Council is another Zionist state, the United States of America, <laughs> which is the current ruling state established by Dajjal. It looks as though Dajjal is establishing the Security Council by himself all alone. The third permanent member of the Security Council is France, another Zionist state. So the Zionists have three out of five. And all three are Christian states which have alliance with the Jews. Hmm? But then came number four, Russia. And Russia is a European state. And Russia used to be fervently Christian. And that Christianity that Russia has is the Christianity that the Quran refers to as, as Rome. Don't tell me eh, that the Rome in the Quran is a city in Italy. Please don't do that. <laughs> the Christianity that Russia has is the Eastern Christianity. This one had its capital in Constantinople, which is now known as Istanbul. That one is Western Christianity which has its capital in Rome and then they broke up and Protestants moved away and so on. That one celebrates something called Christmas. You've heard about Christmas? On the 25th of December. But this one celebrates Christmas on January 9th, I believe. They're different from each other. So Eastern Christianity established itself in the foundations of Russia until the same revolution that came over Western Europe with the French Revolution transforming Christendom into the modern secular civilization that same revolution came to Russia with the Bolshevik Revolution which destroyed the foundations of the Christian Church in Russia and brought into being a new secular state in Russia. That Russia is also a member of the Security Council of the United Nations with veto power. I studied the subject of Gog and Magog, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. Gog and Magog are in the Quran. 
Allah gave to Gog and Magog power that none could fight them and defeat them other than Allah. And I came to the conclusion that Russia and the Russian-led alliance is Magog and the American-led alliance is Gog. This is my conclusion. You don't have to agree with me. No need to pick up boxing gloves if you don't agree with me. And so both Gog and Magog are in the Security Council. <laughs> and then they chose to, to include China as well. And that baffled me because this is Christian, this is Christian, this is Christian, this is Christian as well, all four. And then I remembered that the China that was admitted to the Security, to the security Council was a China led by Chiang, Chiang Kai-shek, Chiang Kai-shek, who was Christian. He was Christian. So China also at that time was led by a Christian government. Hmm? This is the Security Council of the United Nations, dominated by the Zionists. And Allah has prohibited Muslims, prohibited Muslims, from maintaining friendly ties and entering into the embrace of that Judeo-Christian alliance. And guess what we did? <laughs> guess what we did? Huh? While I was while I was, our scholars, our ulama were eating roti chanai. <laughs> yes, the greatest failure of all in the Ummah today is not our political leaders, not our economic leaders, not our educational leaders. The greatest failure in the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam today is the, the failure of our religious leadership. Incapacity to recognize this as shirk. Incapacity to recognize that the Quran is prohibiting us from entering into the embrace of the United Nations organization. No fatwa. No scholarly work. None. Examining the Charter of the United Nations. None. Much less for the International Monetary Fund. <laughs> and so, here we are at this very last hour when the sun is about to set. With the United Nations organization have be, having been successfully used. Successfully used to establish Zionist political and economic dominion over the entire world of Islam. They just, yes, just rest yesterday, they used a United Nations resolution, Security Council resolution, to enter into Libya and bomb Libya to the Stone Age, take over Libya's oil and put it to their use now. This, this just happened yesterday. Hmm? because of a resolution of the Security Council and every single Muslim country which is a member of the United Nations is obliged to obey, submit to the authority of the Security Council. Before we end, what is the new world order that is to come after Israel attacks Iran and the US dollar collapses and the US economy collapses? And then uh, several wars take place and the United States is brought to the brink of military defeat. And Israel takes over from the United States as the next ruling state in the world. And in the same way that Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica, so too will Pax Judaica. It's not Pax at all, it's not peace, it's war. Pax Judaica will now replace Pax Americana. Why does Israel want to rule the world? What will be the implications of Israel taking over the rule of the world from the United States? Answer. Israel wants to rule the world so that a man can stand up in Jerusalem tomorrow. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam described that man to us 1400 years ago. He said he would be a young man 
indicating that in Akhir al-Zaman the young are going to rule. He'll be a young man, he'll be a Jew. He'll be powerfully built, he'll have curly hair. And he will declare that I am the Messiah. And in order for the Jews to accept him as the Messiah, he has to rule the world. Because the scripture said that the Messiah will rule the world. And Nabi Muhammad said that when the Messiah comes back, we know who is our Messiah, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, he will be Hakim, one who rules, with a rule which cannot be challenged by any Tom, Dick or Harry. So this fellow, who is the false Messiah, who is Dajjal, tomorrow will stand up in Jerusalem and make that declaration. In order for his declaration to have, to, to convince the Jews, he has to rule the world. The problem is, there's a fly in the ointment. You see, Allah created two, God and Magad. And Russia is not going to bend its knee to Israel. And China is not going to bend its knee to Israel. And so you're going to face world war with thousands of nuclear weapons being uh, used. That's coming. That's coming. What the Zionists are doing is taking mankind to the ultimate disaster. A disaster in which all the cities of the world are going to be destroyed. Is Imran Hussein exaggerating now? When he speaks about all the cities of the world being destroyed? Huh? I wonder. Let's take a look at the Quran, shall we? Surah Al-Isra And listen to what Allah says وَإِن مِّن قَرْيَةٍ وَإِن مِّن قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَإِن مِّن قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا and not a single town or city will escape. But Allah will destroy them all. And those which escape destruction will be punished with terrible punishment. And this is something inscribed in the Kitab. And so that coming clash Figured off because the Zionists want to rule the world. It's going to destroy most of mankind. But they don't care. They want to rule the world. It is at that time that he declares that I am the Messiah. At that time that Imam al-Mahdi will emerge. And with the emergence of Imam al-Mahdi, the Khilafah will come back. Do you believe for one silly moment that Imam al-Mahdi is going to sit in the General Assembly of the United Nations? Huh? Because he's not allowed in the Security Council. <laughs> no, no Muslim, no Muslim country could have a permanent membership in the Security Council. No. It's Britain, United States, France, Russia and China, the world of Islam, out. You can come and sit for two years and then out you go. <laughs> That's where the Ummah of the Prophet is today. Do you for one silly moment believe that Imam al-Mahdi is going to submit to the authority of the Security Council in accordance with the charter that I've written? Just read. What a silly moment that would be. No. When Imam al-Mahdi emerges, our system of political organization will be restored. The Khilafah will be restored. And our conception of an international order, which I have not been able to describe for you tonight, will also be restored. And that would be the last world order, in which truth will triumph over falsehood. And those today, 
who are being oppressed and all that they have in their hands are stones with which to match the tanks of the oppressors on that day truth will triumph over falsehood and justice will tri triumph over tyranny and oppression this has been our talk on Islam the United Nations Organization and the New World Order and if there's one lesson that comes out of it is that we have failed to study the Quran and we have failed to study the word of the Prophet ﷺ. and it is time for us to correct that mistake ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين